how did you get over caring about what people think? Like, what experience triggered to you feeling like, I'm not caring about what nobody thinks about me or anything of that nature? Man, it's crazy, but I think it's it had a lot to do with my environment and my temper growing up. Like, a lot of people didn't know I had that, <laughs> but I'm really stubborn, and I really just always had that I don't care what you are talking about how you feel I'm gonna do what I want to do like I'm really big on my gut and whatever my gut saying I have to go with that but it sort of happened because I I think all right so when I started playing football I got around the majority but before that, I was around a minority for the majority of my life. So you kind of are used to doing stuff that people aren't really sure about. They really don't. They've never seen. So you have to get used to doing stuff that a lot of people aren't really going to like. Like when I brought my guitar to school and my skateboard, they called me an Oreo. Like, <laughs> But now people are more accepted, accepting of that. So you have to just get to that point where you just like... I don't even care like my graphics class my friend he had spikes in his hair he was just doing stuff that was totally different in that time and I love that and I, I just really got to the point where I'm like I can't worry about if this is cool or not I don't care at the end of the day I just have to do it and society my parents everyone may want me to do this one thing but I'm gonna do this just like we're playing football I love football to death, but it's some people that are like, why are you doing this? Why do you care so much about that? I don't care about them because they're not living my life at the end of the day. Just like with New York, I drove seven hours in a car that wasn't brand new because I felt that, man, in my gut. Like, I don't want to live this life regretting things. Like, the one thing I regret is not going to leaving Orangeville earlier and the the feeling that I had with that caused me to just say screw everything from there on you know like I had to follow my gut because we feel stuff in our gut we know when something's wrong it's just about taking that action and as long as my gut is feeling a way about something I don't care what anybody says <laughs> so when did you realize that you transformed as a person and you're no longer going back. You're no longer simplifying your lifestyle and how you feel for other people. Man, uh, I realized that I transformed the other day when uh, we were uh, talking and this guy, he was like, we switched. He was like, you're more of an extrovert and I'm more of an introvert now. And I'm like, wow, people are seeing me like this? Like, uh, this person who's very vocal and, um, I noticed I wasn't going to go back when I left Cleveland, um, when I went, even if it was, wasn't that far, when I went to Bowling Green. I feel like we all have something inside of us, it's just up to us to get it out. Once I actually got it out, once I started going to open mics, once I started telling people about the book, I'm like, I can't go back. I can't go back and just live this life. Like I tell people before, I was a cart pusher at Walmart before I wrote my first book. You're not going to see me at Walmart pushing the cart again. I can't go back to that. You know, I had to evolve and transform from that. And I think when you hold things in, when you hold in how you really feel, that's when you stay stuck. But when you actually let it out for the world, that's when you can actually experience that change. It's so many times where I, I knew something and I just held it in. Cause I'm like, they won't understand or this and thinking negatively. But when I actually said, screw it. And let the world know who Norman is, <laughs> you can't go back from that. You can't. And that's really it. <laughs>